families celebrate the tradition of the Dick's Sporting Goods Pony League World Series every August. And along the way, people from around the world forge new friendships in Washington, Pennsylvania. The parents who have logged countless miles to get here burst with pride as they dream of their children becoming World Series champions. For the next six days, the center of the 13 and 14 year old baseball universe will rule Western Pennsylvania. Welcome to the 2019 Dick Sporting Goods Pony League World Series. And here we go on a sun kiss spectacular day for baseball and anything else. Welcome to Lou Hayes Stadium. We're in Washington, PA, where the world comes to Washington once a year for the Pony League World Series. We kick it off at high noon with Brownsville, Texas, and Bay County, Michigan. And believe me when I tell you, these two teams did not have to plug this destination into their GPS. They have been here before. They come here almost every year. We'll certainly get into more detail on that in a moment. This is an exciting day for baseball. Obviously, our first game, Brownsville and Bay County. Washington, the host team, will host London. London, its first trip ever here to Washington County for the Pony League World Series. And these 13 and 14-year-old kids, they don't want to just be here. Sure, they're having a great time, the pageantry and everything goes along with it. But they are here for one reason and one reason only and that is to win the Pony League World Series, and they have that opportunity for the next six days right here at Lou Hayes Stadium. What an absolutely spectacular day. We're so excited to be here and bring you two games today. Our second game will be London and Washington right here on AT&T Sportsnet. This is just a fantastic day for baseball, and we're excited to bring it to you. A guy that's called a little baseball is going to take it over now. That's Lanny Frateri. Lanny? All right, thank you very much, uh, Paul. Uh, two games yesterday, uh, Puerto Rico won one and Youngstown the other. This guy is Ernie Galuski, and uh, he's the perfect guy to have alongside because he has coached a lot of youth baseball, knows a lot about the mindset of some of these young 13- and 14-year-olds. Set the stage for this game, Ernie. Well, we have two very experienced programs here once again at the Pony League World Series. Bay County, Michigan making an ast astounding eighth straight appearance here at Lou Hayes Pony Field after outscoring their opponents 65 to 8 in North Zone play. Their opponent, Brownsville, Texas, making their third straight appearance here in the Pony League World Series. They outscored their opponents 85 to 8 in the South Zone. So I think we're going to see a couple of powerful offenses today, Lanny. Just about ready to go. The curtain is about to go up. Thank you for joining us. Starting lineups coming your way. Unfortunately, we've gotten some bad news. To whom? There's a place. The Dick Sporting Goods Pony League World Series is presented in part by Duncan, by West Banco, by Allegheny Health Network, and by Slovenian Savings and Loan. Welcome back to Lou Hayes Pony Field. We're getting set for our noon showdown between Bay County, Michigan and Brownsville, Texas. As they say, something's got to give. When you take a look at these two teams, it's incredible. Um, when you look at Bay County, Michigan, as a team, they're hitting 464. As a pitching staff, the ERA, 1.17. When you look at the ledger on Brownsville, how about averaging 17 runs per game, and their ERA collectively as a pitching staff, 
1.5. It is absolutely incredible. These teams are going to score some runs. They're going to make things happen. And as uh, we know and we love about sports, only one team advances. The other one, unfortunately, has to have that dream crush. But they put it all out. They lay it all out. They get everything they can. Uh, their managers push. And what we're going to do right now is get to our starting lineups. We go to our public address announcer, Bob Gray. Good afternoon and welcome to Game 3 of the Dick's Sporting Goods Pony League World Series. Featuring the South Zone champions from Brownsville, Texas, and the North Zone titleist from Bay County, Michigan. First off, the visitors from Brownsville leading off and pitching. Number one, Kevin Ibarra. Batting second and playing right field, number 24, Tony Villarreal. Batting third and playing first base, number 10, Andre Gamboa. Batting fourth and playing shortstop, number 21, S.I.E. Puente. Batting fifth and catching, number 22, Juan Garcia. Batting sixth and playing third base, number 31, Alejandro Castillo. Batting seventh, the left fielder, number 11, Angelo Solis. Batting eighth, the center fielder, number four, Rene Zayas Jr. Batting ninth and playing second base, number two, Alex Guajardo. Number seven, Rudy Lopez. Number nine, Max Parga. Number 37, Ismael Villarreal. Coach, Daniel Castillo. Coach, Juan Garcia. The manager, Rene Zayas. South Zone champion, Brownsville, Texas. And now the East Zone champion, excuse me, the North Zone champions from Bay County, Michigan. Leading off the center fielder, number one, Landon Sella. Batting second, the right fielder, number 42, Aiden Robinson. Batting third and playing shortstop, number 14, Cam Schultz. Batting fourth, the pitcher, number 13, Jay Skiffle. Batting fifth and catching, number 55, Nathan Ball. Playing third base and batting sixth, number 11, Cole Schmidt. Batting seventh, first baseman, number 12, Colton Hopp. Batting eighth and playing left field, number 21, Devin Schular. Batting ninth and playing second base, number 16, Miles Yurgates. Number two, Lucas Julian. Number three, Keegan LaPan. Number four, Max Fellows. Number six, Leland O'Leary. Number 27, Ethan Burroughs. Number 38, Ben Sporman. Coach Rick Sella. Manager Daryl Schuler. And the manager, Jim Butts. Umpiring at home plate, Jeff DeCellis. At first base, Pat Carney. At second base, Jeff Vrabel Sr. And at third base, Dave Smolko. Decisions Committee, Terry Faust, Tom O'Connor, Rick Melton. At this time, we ask that you all rise for the Pony Prayer and our national anthems. Gentlemen and boys, please remove your hats. Thank you to all veterans and active duty members of the United States Armed Forces for your service. We invite you to render a hand salute during the Star Spangled Banner. Almighty God, Help us to realize that we are gathered here to watch young people play baseball, not to second-guess strategy, dispute decisions, or questionability. That we are here to cheer, to encourage, and to join in the fun that is baseball, not to jeer, discourage, or otherwise degrade the game. That while officials and players are expected to perform within the bounds of certain standards, we also, as spectators, are expected to conduct ourselves within the bounds of good sportsmanship. May this contest end without injury, without feelings of ill will, without disgrace, but as an activity worthy of thy blessing. Amen.
moments away from crying play ball. It's Bay County, Michigan and Brownsville, Texas. Pony League World Series coming straight away right here on AT&T Sportsnet. We've been in your community since 1808. We've stood by your side covering the news of the day. We've been here for the important times in your life. We've celebrated with you. We're proud to have delivered the latest in local, regional, and national news in Washington, Green, and Southern Allegheny counties. We'll be here for the next phase of your life with our print and online editions. The Observer Reporter, life delivered daily. Make a Dunkin' Run for a $2 pick-me-up and avoid the afternoon drag. Should've got one for John. Yeah. Sorry, John. It's okay. Come in for a $2 medium latte or cappuccino from 2 to 6 p.m. America runs on Dunkin'. Kick off the fall season at the EQT Washington and Greene County's Covered Bridge Festival, September 21st and 22nd. Explore 10 different scenic Covered Bridge locations and an array of activities from craft and food vendors, historical reenactments, entertainment, and more. Break away from the everyday. Take a deep breath and dream here. Unplug, unwind, and just be here. Plan your trip today at visitwashingtoncountypa.com. The American spirit lives here. Hi, I'm Dylan Radigan. The world is brimming with possibilities. And that keeps me busy. My latest invention may be able to feed and sustain communities around the world. My team and I are always on the go, meeting new people and seeing new places. I produce films that I really care about. It's an honor to speak to audiences around the world. When people come together, meaningful work gets done. How do I do all this? Well, that part's easy. Hotelplanner.com. Make a Dunkin' Run for a $2 pick-me-up and avoid the afternoon drag. Should've got one for John. Yeah. Sorry, John. It's okay. Come in for a $2 medium latte or cappuccino from 2 to 6 p.m. America runs on Dunkin'. Lou Hayes Pony Field, third game of the tournament. Two games played last night. 72 degrees and bright sunshine. First of three games today, the championship game will be on AT&T Sports on Thursday night, starting at 7 o'clock. Jace Giffel, the left-hander, ready to face Brownsville in the first pitch of the game, a called strike coming at 12-15. That's the key right, off the, right out of the gates there is just to be able to find the strike zone, get the nerves out of the way, and throw strikes. And breaking ball. Ibarra behind on the count 0 and 2. Fly ball, right field line. And the running sliding catch by Robinson. Above average play to start the ball game. What a really nice play there in right field for the first out of this game. Ibarra, Villarreal, Gamboa, Puente, Garcia Castillo, Solis. Zayez and Guajardo. Left-handed batter Villarreal. Ducks out of the way of a pitch. Please note up in the left-hand corner, uh, you'll see the indication of the number of pitches thrown and the speed of the pitches. What's a good fastball for 13, 14-year-olds? I mean, 80 miles an hour is pretty good. If you can get it up to 80 at this age, uh, you're doing something pretty special. Two and one on Villarreal, who was the winner of the fastest runner competition yesterday. Counts two and two. Ball a bit overzealous, started the 
throw the ball around the infield. You got to love the excitement, right? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Try to sell it. There's strike three. Two outs. Defensively for uh, Bay County, Schuler, Sella, Robinson left to right, Schmidt, Schultz left side of the infield. Your guide is at second, hop at first ball, the catcher for Jay Skiffle. Both strike on Gamboa, who told us the other day he prefers to be referred to as Christian, given name Andre, also from time to time is called Andy by his teammates. One ball, one strike. The winner of this game between Brownsville and Bay County will play next on Monday. Well, fouled away. The loser of this game plays at 7 o'clock tomorrow and will play the loser of the game between London and Washington, Pennsylvania. Two and two on Gamboa with two outs and nobody on. Giffle's done a nice job here. 12 pitches, eight strikes, and we talked about AD being very good velocity, but you know as well as I do, if you're left-handed, <laughs> velocity doesn't matter. Line shot, base hit. First of the game. Ball rolls to the wall. Two out double. A nice piece of hitting there by Gamboa. Down two strikes. Giffel tried to get inside with that pitch, the fastball. He's able to keep his hands inside of it and get the barrel on it and drive it down the opposite field line to right field for an extra base hit. Two, two. Brownsville now, Puente. And this young man prefers to be called easy. What was that Commodore song? Easy like Sunday morning? Yeah. yeah. Easy like Saturday morning. <laughs> Giffel's pitch. By the way, the pitch limit is 95. No pitcher on a day in one game can throw over 95 pitches. Ball in on the hands to make a two and one on number 21. And a good pitch there by Giffel to have the have the courage to come inside in a 2-0 count. You know that Puente is in a fastball count there looking for something to drive, but made an excellent pitch, was able to get it in far enough to jam Puente. Count goes to three and one on Puente. Brownsville. Fifth appearance was here in 2017. Four teams from Texas have won Pony League World Series championships. Now full count on Puente. And Brown, I'm sorry, go ahead. Brownsville making their third straight appearance. I mean, they've kind of taken the reins there in Texas as the team to beat. And they've been able to dominate that zone and make it here to Washington, Pennsylvania. Cow is three and one, then three and two, and Puente chased a pitch away. Top of the first, no runs, one hit for Brownsville, one left on, and Bay County coming to bat. DJ's a sharpshooter, but when he went down with a shoulder tear, he lost his aim. That's when Dr. Sam Akavan and the sports medicine team at AHN got it back for him, just like they did for Josh Bell. Thanks to the surgeons at AHN, they're both back in the game and back on target. Whatever your sport, whatever your level, getting back to what you love is living proof. Call 412-DOCTORS for an appointment with AHN, official medical provider of the Pittsburgh Pirates.
Bottom of the first coming up, uh, the uh, distance between the bases in Pony Baseball, 80 feet and 54 from the mound to home plate, not 60 feet, six inches. 250 down the lines, 285 to the power alleys, 305 to straightaway center field. And no doubt you've noticed that uh, the fence is about oh, 15 feet high. Sella, Robinson, Schultz. By the way, Sella and Schultz were here, played last year in the Pony League World Series. Giffle, Ball, Schmidt, Hop, Schuler, and Jurgaitis. Matter of fact, there are four left-handed batters in the lineup for Bay County. Ernie, do you do you find that the righty-lefty matchups is a, a factor in baseball at this age? I think uh, if you see the ground there on the first pitch, quick out for Ibera right off the bat. But yeah, Lanny, I think it's really tough on left-handed hitters because they don't see many left-handed pitching. And the defense, Solis, Zayas. Villarreal on the outfield, in the outfield, to Castillo, Puente, Guajardo, Gamboa, Garcia. Swing and a miss. Tell me that last statement again. Yeah, I mean, I think it's harder on the left-handed hitters. I'll see it with the teams that I coach. That if, you, if you're a left-handed hitter and you run up against the left-handed pitcher that has a good breaking ball, that's, that's quite the adjustment for these guys because they just haven't seen it enough. They don't, they don't have the video. They don't have the analytics that have uh, become such a part of baseball at this point that, you know, they're just kind of they're trying to figure it out on the fly when uh, when they see left handed pitchers, especially ones that have a good breaking ball. One ball, two strikes on Aiden Robinson. A good number of the players on the Bay County team are from Bay City, some from Ex Essexville. Ben Sporman is from Saginaw. Good job by Villarreal to take charge there. Two outs, no score bottom of the first inning. Ten teams at the start of the tournament. Double elimination. By the end of today, nine of the ten teams will have played, the exception the team from Simi Valley does not play its first game until 1 o'clock tomorrow. Jim Butts coaches at third. He's the manager of the Bay County team. In Pony Baseball, the head honcho is the manager. High school baseball, he's a head coach. College yeah. baseball, head coach. Minor league baseball, major league baseball, he's a manager. It'd be a lot less confusing if we could just figure it out across the board, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was amazed all the years that uh, I traveled with the Buccos, particularly with Jimmy Leland. I had, people would come up to him and say, hey, coach. No, uh -uh. That's, he's a skipper or a manager. Yep, that's a no-no in professional baseball. By the way, I learned the hard way that the first seat on the bus is the manager's seat. Yes. Yes, first uh, on the left, right? When you go to the... When As you get facing the, the back uh, of the yeah. bus, yeah. First seat on the left is always the manager's seat. Consecutive, uh, or rather, two outs of the inning, the first and third outs of frame ground ball to second baseman Nohardo. No score after one in the Dick Sporting Goods Pony League World Series. And then I said, it's like cheese on toast. <laughs> I can take our next you. Haven't you heard? I live in the neighborhood. It's my constitutional right to bank here. You know you could have just used our mobile app. You've changed. Welcome to the 21st century, AB baby. That's how you do it. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender.
Jeff Catola, you're the president of the Washington County Bureau of the Chamber of Commerce and the Tourism Bureau. Did you dial up the weather for today? It's always a great day in Washington County. So, uh, yeah, the weather, we couldn't have bought better weather today, and uh, we hope to continue the whole series. What does this mean for your, your little nook? This is really a, a great representation of Washington County. It's about bringing sports and the community together to really not only show off some great youth baseball, but also to show off our growing county here in southwestern Pennsylvania. Don't you just love when traditions continue? It's wonderful. I mean, we have been so blessed to have this here for 68 years, and we have every intention to keep moving that forward into the foreseeable future. It's, it's wonderful for our county. Jeff, thanks for your time. Paul, thank you. Lanier and Ernie, back to you. Thanks, Paul. Leading off the second inning, Juan B. Garcia, the fourth. And once again, Jay Skiffle out there throwing strikes. Both pitchers have been impressive here so far, Lanny. Pitching to both sides of the plate and pounding the strike zone. And your guy just makes the catch in center field. One down, top of the second. And a nice play there by... Your guide is you never know what uh, when you turn your back to the infield and you're running full speed and you don't hear anybody talking. There obviously wasn't a ton of communication there that uh, you don't know if you're going to run into somebody, but he held on and made the play. Alejandro Castillo. The Brownsville team traveled over 1,700 miles to get to Washington, Pennsylvania. And two outs in the second. Very efficient again for Giffel. A couple of quick outs on five pitches, a pop-up, and a ground out. This is uh, two offenses, Lanny, that are used to scoring a lot of runs. In their zone play, both teams were 5-0 and and really lit up the scoreboard. And, you know, we're almost uh, an inning and a half through this game without a base runner. Angelo Solis, manager of uh, Brownsville, Rene Zayas. He uh, works for the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. <laughs> oh, and two. <laughs> pretty, pretty good 0-2 pitch right there. Pitch that sinks and runs away from the right hand and hitting Solis. Left center field. And the fine running catch by Landon Sella. Branchville down in order in the top of the second. No score going to bottom of number two. At Community Bank, we've made it our business to help area businesses thrive. No matter where you go to work, talk to our business banking team to see how Community Bank can work for you. It's what better business banking is all about. That's Community Bank. covering the news of the day. We've been here for the important times in your life. We've celebrated with you. We're proud to have delivered the latest in local, regional, and national news in Washington, Green, and Southern Allegheny counties. We'll be here for the next phase of your life with our print and online editions. The Observer Reporter, life delivered daily. At Washington Honda, we always work hard to provide you with the service you deserve. Our staff is friendly, well-trained, and knowledgeable, and most importantly, we listen to you. Washington Honda delivers the excitement and the experience that you expect, in addition to quality vehicles that you can depend on. Call us, visit us, or shop online at washhonda.com. The vehicle you want from the dealership you trust, Washington Honda, it really is all at the mall. 
Looking for a new home or to refinance an existing one? The Mortgage Team at Community Bank will show you how to make your dream home a dream come true. Plus, our rates are pretty dreamy too. All because building better communities is our business. That's Community Bank. The Dick Sporting Goods Pony League World Series is presented in part by Community Bank, by Martinson and Salvetti Insurance Group, and by Pathways. Had a commercial for the Observer Reporter a moment ago. Joe Toscano is covering the game today, and Celeste Van Kirk, photojournalist, here with the Observer Reporter to come up with pictures for the paper. A couple of years ago, Celeste won an honor for her picture of a player hurdling the catcher at home plate. Here's Giffle to lead off the bottom of the second inning. Line shot, base hit, cut off in the gap by Zayas. Well, first base runner for Bay County. Well, just a great piece of hitting there by the pitcher, Jace Giffle. Got a pitch elevated, didn't try to get underneath of it and floated out of the ballpark, but instead just got the barrel to it, hit it hard the other way in that left center field gap for a leadoff single. Bay County has something brewing here in the second. Ball the number five hitter of the order, one of the four left-handed batters in the lineup. I want to take a moment, send along our best wishes to dear friend and the voice of the Pony League World Series, Mark Uriah. Mark is quote unquote on the injured reserve list, and we miss him. Ball bunted. And caught in the air, safe as the call, close play. Nice defensive play there. The bunt gets popped up, and Ibera makes a nice almost over-the-shoulder catch there on the run, flips it to first, and bang, bang, play at first. But I do think Giffle was able to get back in time. Yeah, Giffle had taken an, an extra step or two, even while that ball was about to be caught. Take a, took a step towards second base. Called strike there. So Bay County decided it was going to bunt its number five hitter after the leadoff single. But no advance by Giffle, not Cole Schmidt. Mark Uriah is not here for the tournament. As I said, we do indeed miss him. And he's done such a fabulous job for so many years as the voice of the Pony League World Series. Randy Gore and Jared Barton are the uh, announcers on WJPA today for these first two games of three. Oh, and two on Schmidt. About a six hour trip for the folks from Bay County to come to Washington, Pennsylvania. They always say when, uh, when you get used to making a trip, it seems shorter. So for these guys, it probably doesn't feel like six hours anymore. It feels like a couple of hours. Ibarra, 0-2 pitch. 74 mile per hour fastball, two outs. Ibarra's first strike out of the game. Byron did it there with two fastballs to lead off the at bat right on the outside part of the plate. Uh, really unhittable strikes for Schmidt. Got ahead 2 0, threw the breaking ball, foul ball, and then makes another good pitch with the fastball there to strike out Schmidt. And Colton Hopp takes ball one. Our second game today, and here on ATT Sports, the team from London, United Kingdom, against the locals, Washington, Pennsylvania. By the way, I talked to the, the manager, the coaches, and the players from the London team the other day. I noticed only about two of the players had, had accents, had English accents. And that's because, here's the runner going, ball fouled back. There are some five or six players on the London team that are from Japan, one from Seattle, one from New York City, one from Long Island, as a matter of fact, the manager of the team is from Long Island. We'll talk more about that when we get into the ball game. But team from London against Washington in our second game. Two outs runner at first. Two and two on Hop. It's been the pitch here in this inning for Ibarra is that 
fastball away to the right-handed hitters, creating a really difficult angle for those right-handers, and he's able to run that ball back on the outside part of the plate. I actually think we, we have a line drive off the first base coach here, Lanny. It actually hit the coach. Looks like he's going to be okay. Rick Sella. Rick, by the way, has three sons that are real good baseball players landing on this um, Bay County team and also twin boys, Lucas and Logan, who college baseball players, one at Delta, one at uh, Olivet. Scoreless, bottom of the second. Off the tip of the pitcher's glove. Some confusion. But second baseman Wajardo does clear things up and gets the out at first score at 1-4-3. No score after two, Bay County in Brownsville. of Southwestern Pennsylvania, we believe that every life has potential and we're dedicated to fulfilling it. Our adult and community services give individuals with intellectual disabilities or autism the opportunity to develop new skills, have an independent home life, and make their own choices. From personalized daily care and community participation to supervised independent living, we cater to each individual's specific needs. Pathways of Southwestern Pennsylvania, your path to lifelong fulfillment. Great history here at the Pony League World Series. That's Joe E. Brown, the former commissioner of Pony League Baseball. And that's Joe L. Brown. Pirate fans remember him, the GM from 1956 to 1976. He was greeting the team from Youngstown. Back to you guys. Hey, Paul Alexander, the voice of the Meadows. Did you bring some wow with you today? <laughs> Always. Always. Josiah so starts the third inning with a base hit to center. Now Alex Wajardo. You would think this is a sacrifice bunt situation here. Wajardo, the nine hitter in this lineup after the leadoff single from Zayas. Sacrifice three unassisted. Hey, by the way, Paul, did I get it right that I, it's, it's the wall, right? It's the whoa. Oh, okay, not the wow, it's the, the whoa, okay. Well, I mean, there's a wow involved, but we talk about the whoa. The whoa, okay. It's right. the horse, playing with the horse. Whoa. Whoa, okay, thank you. Just whoa. Got right at second one out, now Ibarra. Good defensive play by right fielder Robinson to retire Ibarra in the first inning. How about the execution of the sacrifice bunt by Alex Wajardo. Just perfectly placed down that first baseline. Makes the first baseman field the ball to allow Zayas to get into scoring position here. The second runner in scoring position today for Brownsville. Right field again to Robinson. Tagging up, going for third. Zayas, and he is safe.
Runner third, two outs. And a nice, nice throw there from in right field by Robinson. Got behind that ball, made a great throw to third, just offline enough for Zayas to be able to slide in there safely at third base. First time we've had a runner at third in this game, scoreless ball game, top of the third. A little bit of a risky base running, base running move there with uh, the catch in right field being the second out of the inning, potentially making the third out of the inning at third base, but uh, Zayas able to get in there safely. By the way, Ernie Galuski and I have had numerous conversations <laughs> about some of the things that happen in, in youth baseball and college and high school, how it relates to what are some of the the uh, understanded, understanded or, or uh, the, uh, the the unwritten rules, whether it's yeah, the things the, that you uh, should. Uh, yeah, the, the book as it's often referred to. But you know what's crazy is we can we can talk about youth baseball or high school baseball, college baseball. I see it more in professional baseball now than I do at any level. You see the base running and. You know, the game has really changed here oh, in yes. the last 10 or 15 years. The, the total mental approach to how you play the game, okay. and, you know, on the bases. And so. Does that count right? One and two? So no, Jim two Butts. Balls. Two, one. two balls, I want to show you. Oh, all right. Two, one. Go after this guy, all right? Yep. Got a runner on third. First or third. Nobody, nobody passed, you, nothing passed you. Yes, you're going to third, you're going to first. All right, get loose. Come on, everything, throw it right now. Hey, we're not gonna get by with this fastball. You gotta be able to get the curveball across. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jim Butts going out to remind his players what their mindset should be with that runner at third and two outs. We're gonna have a pitching change here. Yes, indeed we are. And Cole Schmidt is going to come on with two outs in the third. Schmidt had been playing third. So it is two and two thirds for Giffel. First, 12 moved to third. 11 is on the mound. It looks like Giffel will go to first base now, correct? <laughs> And I guess that would move Hop to third. First game of three today. And it's the game within the game of managing your pitcher's pitch counts within the tournament play. You know, you, they throw so many pitches, they have to uh, sit a certain amount of days. And with all the new pitching rules, it looks like the plan was to get Giffle out of there before he threw 35 pitches here today. If you uh, throw between 21 and 35 pitches, you need one day off. 36 to 50, two days off. The, the winner of this game does not play until Monday. So it is Giffel playing first and Hop moves to third. And will run the count to three balls. And to strike, Schmidt inherited the 2 1 count on Villarreal. Full count. How about that? Your second pitch can come out of the bullpen or you come off third base. You miss with a fastball. 3 1 count. We'll just throw a curveball in there for him. Back for strike two. How about that? Great pitch. So Schmidt gets the final out of the third. Brownsville no runs, one hit runner left at third. No score after two and a half innings at the Dick Sporting Goods Pony Lake World Series. There's a place far from the city, yet just down the road, where likes and shares mean more. It's in every bite, each performance, and every night where the miles we ride together become the memories we share forever. We dream because they fought for it. We give because they worked for it. The American spirit lives here. I can feel it. 
playing to this time? How about a game of MVP? 415 to right field. Right field with the Kirk Gibson trot. Seat 15. That's an M. Dodger dogs all day. Woo! Extra kraut, please. Foul pull. That looks like a V. All tied up. Looks like I win MVP again. Let's run it back. Well, Becky Hardwick has a uh, geography lesson for you in case you're not familiar with Brownsville, Texas. The uh, this is interesting. Brownsville, the, the Southern Zone champions, they won the title in Youngsville, Louisiana. And then they went home, a 13 hour trip on the bus to Brownsville, and then had to come back to Youngsville to uh, New Orleans and flew from New Orleans through Atlanta to Pittsburgh. And the count one and one on Devin Schuler. I'm sure those kids loved every second of it. To get to travel around with their teammates. Such an exciting time in their lives to be able to participate in such a great event like the Pony League World Series. Schuler goes chasing one and two. Second game, Washington and London. Third game of the day, the defending champions from Chinese Taipei against the team from Arecibo, Puerto Rico. Second strikeout for Ibarra. And Ibarra just going at him with fastballs right now. Looks good coming out of his hand. He's confident in it. He's been dominant so far the first time through this Bay County lineup. Miles Jurgaitis. I was talking to the coaching staff at Bay County today, and they were they were raving about about Miles, a small, thin guy, but he gives you everything. He's always smiling, got great baseball instincts. That's really the beauty of baseball, Lanny. Is it, you know you don't have to be the biggest, strongest, fastest guy in the world to to be a good baseball player and to be part of a team and. and be a role player that can help your team win games in little ways. And I know I love and just really enjoy coaching guys like that. The guys that are excited to be at the ballpark every day and do all the little things right. We were, as I were talking to the, the coaching staff and Jim Butts and Rick Sella, I think Miles knew what we were talking about him. I'd rather like just be like. <laughs> just one hit for Bay County so far. The single Giffle in the second. Now make it two hits. So the number nine hitter, Miles Yurgaitis, aboard with one out. That's just a perfect example there for Yurgaitis. I mean, he goes down and gets a pitch, keeps his hands inside of it, gets the barrel on it enough to, to drive it the other way over the opposite infielder's head for a, for a base hit and a base runner here for the top of this Bay County order. Mentioned earlier that Landon Sella and Cam Schultz Play in the 2018 Pony League World Series. Sella grinding out his first time up from Essexville. I've seen really good command of the off-speed pitches here so far today. Both, both teams, now three pitchers have pitched in this game. Every one of them have had great command of the breaking ball. Wow, fine play at third. Castillo gets the out. 
No, nope, it is. Yes, it is an out. Ball came out of the glove, but it was a transfer situation. Scored 5 4. The out at second base. Sell it safe at first. A nice play there by Castillo. That ball stays down, but he started low to the ground, was able to react. They say third base is a reaction position. Position you got to be able to react quickly, and that's exactly what Castillo did. Put a great throw to second base. Hardo mishandled the ball, but it was after he had secured it, so the out uh, was recorded. And foul ball out of play. We're at the Lujes Pony Field, Washington Park. Sella was in motion there in an 0 0 count with two outs, trying to steal second, get into scoring position. Games like this, we haven't seen a ton of offense so far. Very well pitched. Little things like stealing a base or taking an extra base could end up being the difference in this game. Understandable, a throw to first base after the runner was going on the previous pitch. We'll see if he doubles up on it. I think pitchers sometimes they, they give up after one throw over. You know Sell is going to be in motion at some point, so why not throw over two, maybe three times? When um, when you coach teams, do you dictate throw off, step offs, and throws to somewhat, yeah. somewhat? I mean, they they my players have the uh, you know they have the freedom to do it themselves, but there are situations where I will specifically ask for it. You know, you'll, you'll pick up on things, base runners just sitting in the dugout. You know, a guy that maybe takes a little bit extra lead than he did the last time or looks a little bit nervous or maybe gives it away. Runner going. It's a ball, two and two. Sella with a stolen base. Garcia had a good pitch to throw on there. Sella just beats the throw, gets a good jump at first base, good speed, able to slide into second base, and that's a big play in the game now. Sella in scoring position with two outs here in the inning. Full count. And that's now 38 pitches for Ibarra. So By the way, of the two games last night, we saw a plethora of walks. We have not had a base on balls yet in this game. Until now. First and second, two outs. And Cam Schultz. Yeah, it has been a very well pitched game, and that, that's okay. That's that's an okay walk. Ibarra had fallen behind there. You have first base open. You know, why give in with a fastball or a pitch that you're not comfortable throwing? You know, with first base open. Now you get a clean count here on Schultz. Well, earlier today we had the Champions League game with not only the uh, Champions players taking part, but also all of the teams were there around the infield to to uh, encourage the young players for 25 years. The Pony League World Series has hosted a gathering of some very special kids who just love to play baseball and softball. So that happened earlier today before the opening ceremonies. Officially established in October 2009, the mission of the Pony Champions League is to provide every child, regardless of special needs, the opportunity to participate in America's favorite pastime. What a really, really cool event that is. I got the opportunity this morning, Lanny, to, to really watch a lot of it. And I, there was no shortage of smiles on the field here this morning. No doubt about that. Conclave's end. Step off. Uh, I think the shortstop got word from the dugout that he was out of position. He wanted the dugout wanted, wanting him to dog the runner at second base and ball one. What a nice play there by Garcia. Really the first pitch that's been way out of the zone there. Garcia able to backhand it. Make sure it doesn't get back to the backstop and both of these runners move up. Ishmael Villarreal warming up in the bullpen down the left field side for Brownsville. Right field. 
Villarreal makes the catch. Bay County, no runs, one hit, two left on base. And we've written three chapters of today's first story, no score. They play in all corners of the world. Boys and girls each learning the true value that only teamwork, competition, and sportsmanship can provide. Each year, more than 500,000 participants of all ages proudly represent Pony on baseball and softball diamonds of all sizes. Everyone deserves a chance to learn and play the game. They're our players today. They'll be our leaders in the future. Pony, making a difference in your neighborhood and all over our world. Hi, I'm Dylan Radigan. The world is brimming with possibilities, and that keeps me busy. My latest invention may be able to feed and sustain communities around the world. My team and I are always on the go, meeting new people and seeing new places. I produce films that I really care about. It's an honor to speak to audiences around the world. When people come together, meaningful work gets done. How do I do all this? Well, that part's easy. Hotelplanner.com. The pitcher's duel continues. We're still scoreless. We're with Bob Gregg, 35 years of the director of this thing. How did it time to fly? It just flies by, and, and, and they say as you get older, time goes faster, and it's certainly the case. Uh, every year there's more to do, and the time's going faster. This has gotten bigger and better after a couple of years when you weren't sure it was going to continue. 2012, we thought we were going to have to let it go to another uh, area. Washington County Tourism said, no, we don't think that's a good idea. They stepped up and made sure that we were good for 2013. Two years later, Dix came on board, got us to look at things differently, how we do it. And because tourism and Dix are at the table, other people have joined us. I want to say you did a fantastic with the names of the starting lineups. You were spot on. Thanks very much. It's, it's a lot of practice. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Paul. Guys, back to you. Bob Gregg, quite a remarkable guy, works for WJPA Radio, and uh, when he uh, when he comes out to, he's the maestro. He's coordinating so many things during the course of the festivities, pregame activities, public address announcer, keeping tabs on changes with starting lineups. I have tremendous respect for that man, Bob Gregg. It's not an easy job what he does. Gamboa doubled his first time up. Schmidt came out with two outs in the third and got a strikeout. And he did it uh, with back-to-back -back breaking balls after missing with a fastball on his first pitch to run to count the three balls and a strike. He was able to throw back-to-back -back breakers for the strikeout. Foul ball. And out of play. Count two balls, two strikes. Brownsville has never won a Pony League World Series championship. Texas and teams from Texas have won four. Count two and two on Gamboa. Right field, well hit, and gone. Gamboa puts Brownsville in front one to nothing. Just a beautiful piece of hitting there by Gamboa. Big, strong, physical guy in that batter's box. Two-strike approach. Got a pitch away from him. And again, I don't think he tried to do too much with it, but got the barrel to it, and the ball just exploded off the barrel for an opposite field home run to break this scoreless tie here on Saturday. Now Puente. Fourth inning of what's scheduled to be a seven inning ball game. Spinning and throwing. And Schultz gets the second out. An above average play by the Bay County shortstop. Yeah, really nice play to be able to go up the middle there, forehand the ball, and see him lose his footing a little bit right about after he catches the ball, but is able to regain his footing, reverse pivot, and put a lot on that throw to first base. Beautiful play there by the Bay County shortstop. One nothing, Brownsville leads. It's 
How about the field conditions here, Lanny? I mean, the field that looks absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, Bob Greger told me that this field was in real bad shape three weeks ago with all the rain we've had yep. this year. It's remarkable what these guys do up here to get this field ready for play, and uh, it will take a little bit of a beating this week with all of the World Series games going on, but they do an outstanding job. Mark Murphy is the head groundskeeper. Good friend, Joe Mays, he was helping out a bit last couple of days. Joe Mays just recently retired as the head baseball coach at Peters Township. Well, two and one on Garcia. Jeff DeSalis, the home plate umpire. He and first base umpire Pat Carney are from Poland, Ohio. Foul ball out of play. Jeff Rabel is the head, is the crew chief at second base. Dave Smoko at third. They're both from Grove City, Ohio. One out, a run in on the home run. Three and two. I like the idea there by Schmidt to try to expand the zone a little bit. Just didn't get the call. Count remains full. You know what I love, and I see it every year when we work together here, Lanny, at the Pony Lake World Series, just uh, the way pitchers pitch to both sides of the plate. You know, they throw their fastballs to both sides of the plate. They throw their off-speed pitches, and, and that's really something you don't see a ton in Major League Baseball anymore because everybody throws 100 miles an hour in the Major Leagues now or 95 miles an hour, and it's such a power game that but you see these kids year in and year out when they come here to Washington, Pennsylvania to compete in this event that uh, they, they can pitch. You know, they, they can really pitch. They pitch to both sides of the plate, and it's just fun to watch. Ball fouled away. Do you think it's more important for a pitcher to uh, work both sides of the plate or up and down? Or does it matter? Does it uh, depend on which pitcher? Well, I mean, obvi obviously both helps, but I think being able to work to both sides of the plate uh, completely changes everything for the hitter. Because hitters are going to cheat, and they're going to look to one side of the plate. Base hit on the 3-2 pitch. Ball to the warning track. And in safely with a stand-up double is Garcia. It's now three extra base hits in the game for Brownsville, and all of which have come with two strikes. So, again, in a, in a generation where the strikeout is so accepted at, at all levels of baseball, Brownsville doing an excellent job here in this game. Only two stri three strikeouts in the game, but they've been able to have, have some, some success with two strikes. Changing their approach, just trying to put the ball in play hard, and they've been able to uh, be rewarded with two doubles and a home run with two strikes here in this game. Now Castillo. And time is called as uh, Jim Butts wants to come out and talk to uh, his crew. Jim Butts, who is a contractor. Hey, got to settle in right here. I get two pitches to decide whether to leave you here or not. Okay? All right. What we got? We got one out. One out. Runner on second base. Don't lose track of them. You guys keep them honest, okay? Yeah. Quit switching me. The ear away from you is away. The ear to first base is away. Okay? All right, let's go. Did you catch that something about away? Did not. Obviously, uh, Jim Butts reminding his team to keep tabs on that runner at second with one out. Not only that, but uh, you know, you got to decide here, you know, how do you want to pitch to Castillo with first base open? Only one out in the inning, but first base is open, so you don't want to give in here. Bay County, Keegan LaPan warming up. One ball, one strike. 
The inning started with the Christian Gamboa home run. And a 1-0 Brownsville lead. Your guide is with a throw to first two outs on the play. Garcia moves to third. And now the number seven hitter, Angelo Solis. Boy, a big out there for Schmidt. And Bay County, now two outs in the inning. Have a chance here, make a couple good pitches. If you're able to retire Solis, you can get out of this inning with only the one run put up on the scoreboard after the solo homer by Gamboa. Twenty two pitches for Schmidt. We'll see if this become a trend here with with Bay County. Are they going to switch pitchers every thirty five pitches into right field Robinson. Shot number three Brownsville's top of the fourth inning one run on two hits a home run by Gamboa runner left to third one nothing Brownsville. A college education. A new den edition. The trip of a lifetime. At West Banco, your home becomes more than a home when you take advantage of our new low home equity flex line loan rate. West Banco, by all accounts, better. Unfortunately, we've gotten some bad news. To whom? And now here with us tonight, he was the voice of the Pirates for 33 seasons, including that 1979 World Championship year. He retired from the Buccos in 2009, currently a professor of communications at Waynesburg University. We are thrilled to have him back at the ballpark. There is no doubt about it, a mentor, a dear friend, ladies and gentlemen, Lenny Frateri. Wow. Lenny, that had to be amazing. What a year, 1979. We are family. <laughs> and Lanny, you were a big part of that family. That had to be amazing. Uh, thank you, Paul. And thanks to all the crew from Pikewood Creative for uh, getting that videotape. And uh, I'm surprised. I didn't know we were going to do that. Thank you very much. It was a really a mem memorable weekend for for me. Uh, we had a we had a private steak dinner. Just the players and their wives, and I was invited to that. That wow. was Friday night at Hyde Park Steakhouse, and and then to be invited back into the broadcast booth to visit on TV with uh, Greg and Steve, and then with Bob and Joe on radio. So, and I heard that they uh, that they talked about uh, your legendary note cards. <laughs> they did. Which you know I've had the here they are. Yep, here they are. <laughs> they need to end up in a Hall of Fame somewhere, Lena. Ball fouled away two and two. By the way, uh, um, looking at that that uh, video, I, I'm, what comes to mind is what was I thinking when I bought that shirt? <laughs> I, I will say you look very good in the Pirates jersey. It was a good look. Yeah, I uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I uh, 
That's the second jersey that I have. I received one that is framed. I received it when I celebrated my 25th year with the Pirates. And now this one has the number 79 on it. Two balls and two strikes on Giffel. And the strikeout one away in the fourth. Again, my thanks to Mike Parson, Dan Lohman. Bob Gregg probably had something to do with that as well. And Roger Lennart is our, oh, look at this. I, I really love this coat, by the way. This was in 1974. That's Craig Re uh, Reynolds next to me there. Um, I don't know why I wore those glasses. I have no idea why I did that. You were a stylish young man, Lanny. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you and I have known each other for about ha uh, five, six years. That's the first time I've ever heard you lie. <laughs> I mean, if for, for the time, you were, a, you were a trendsetter? No. There's Jim Rooker. We partnered for quite a few years, had a lot of fun together. Now Cole Schmidt, one nothing. Brownsville leads. Couple of really quick outs here for Abara here in the bottom of the fourth inning. The strikeout and then the line out on the first pitch to ball. Swing and a miss, nothing and two on Schmidt. Just two hits for Bay County, four for Brownsville, and a one nothing Brownsville lead. Kick off the fall season at the EQT Washington and Greene County's Covered Bridge Festival, September 21st and 22nd. Explore 10 different scenic Covered Bridge locations and an array of activities from craft and food vendors, historical reenactments, entertainment, and more. Break away from the everyday. Take a deep breath and dream here. Unplug, unwind, and just be here. Plan your trip today at visitwashingtoncountypa.com. The American spirit lives here. Brownsville draws first blood, leads it one to nothing. Game two here on AT&T Sportsnet. It'll be going across the pond. The home team, Washington, managed by Ben Miller. The UK. Yeah. How about that? Yeah, it's pretty cool to open up against, uh, you know, some of obviously some American history. It's cool. To, our guys are all excited because, you know, they obviously know about England and stuff. But uh, they're excited. I mean, it's cool. They were talking yesterday uh, during the home run derby at the Pirates game. They got to meet each other a little bit when we went on the field. It was really cool for the guys. A little bit of nerves. You're going to have a lot of fans here. Yeah, our guys are handling it. They, uh, a lot of them have been here since they were like five, so they, they understand what it's going to be like. So I think that's a, that helps a little bit, but uh, we'll see how it goes. A little bit of pressure on the home team. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, though, I try to remind them it's just a ball game. You know, if we show up, play our best, it's what we can do, but uh, we're looking to surprise some people. Looking forward to it. Thanks. Yes, sir. No problem. Guys, back to you. All right. Um, the uh, Washington County team with uh, a number of players from the Cannon McMillan school district a couple from Trinity go to the top of the fifth inning but and the play made by Schmidt nice job there by Schmidt bouncing off the mound Watch him field this bun here, actually, with uh, with two hands to make sure he gets the ball, moves his feet on to first. Just basic PFP pitcher's fielding practice, but see a lot of times that play doesn't get made properly in the game, but a nice job there by Schmidt. Another first pitch quick out for a pitcher in this game. Well, Hardo ninth in the batting order. Dad played college baseball. The only run of the game, the opposite field home run by Gamboa, leading off the fourth inning. Good breaking ball there from Schmidt. That has been his best, best pitch here today. That's more like a slider right there. We've seen the, the over-the-top 12-6 to six breaking ball. That was more like a hard breaking ball slider. And popped out of play. Our second game, Washington and London, and uh, in the third game, which we will not have for you today on AT&T, it'll feature Chinese Taipei and Arecibo. Getting you ready for the uh, Pirates game in St. Louis tonight. Oh, 
And the count two and two. Then we'll have a seven o'clock game for you tomorrow on AT&T Sports. It'll be the uh, loser of the Washington London game against the loser of this game. What? Stepped out of the batter's box. Wow. That's a strikeout. You are not allowed to step out of the batter's box in Pony Baseball. Ball fouled away as we go to the top of the menu for Brownsville and Kevin Ibarra, who's 0 for 2. He has twice fly to right. He's been close both times. Two decent at bats where he's he's been on time, just couldn't quite find the the thick part of the barrel. But uh, you have a feeling that, uh, that Ibarra is ready to break out in this game. There you go. Nice call, partner. Slaps it right up the middle. You got a pitch in the middle of the plate there, and, and again, not trying to do too much. And in a generation where baseball has really changed over. The, over the last few years, and you know, kids have uh, gotten into the launch angle and trying to hit poolside home runs all the time. Been impressed with some of the at bats here today by these young hitters. Just uh, taking what the pitcher's giving him, working back up the middle, and hitting line drives. Even our home run today was an opposite field line drive that left the ballpark. Runner going. And the stolen base, pretty good jump for Ibarra. Yeah, Ibarra actually even had taken off before Schmidt even broke to come to the plate. Stole that one on the pitcher, got a giant lead, and took off and easily able to steal second base and get into scoring position here with two outs. Foul ball to the right. Now the winner of this game will play Monday against the winner of the contest scheduled tomorrow at one between Simi Valley and the winner of the London Washington game. Count three balls, one strike. Villarreal striking out, looking at called third strikes in the first and third innings. This will be pitch number 35 for Schmidt coming up. I'm sorry, Rudy Lopez is the hitter. Pardon my missing of that. And ball four. And now Gamboa who homered. And a pitching change here for Brownsville. Looks like that's going to be the plan, Lanny, is to run a new pitcher out there every 35 pitches to keep these guys that's available. 35. All right. Hey, go have a rest. Go have a rest. Two outs, two guys on. Okay? This guy hit it over the right field fence last time, and he hit it hard to right field time before that. We're going to have to throw a lot of soft stuff at him. Figure it out right now on your warm-ups. Figure it out. Mm hmm? Yeah, but it wasn't thrown real hard. Home run uh, by Gamboa in the fourth, and he had a double back in the first. You heard, hear Jim Butts talking about that. And so LaPan, Keegan LaPan, comes on. Boy, just what a presence Gamboa is in that batter's box. You look there, number 10, how big he is. And all he has to do is get the baseball onto his barrel probably going to be able to leave this park and on a consistent basis. So very scary guy to be pitching to right now, Christian Gamboa. In this inning after two outs, Ibarra single stole second, and then Lopez drew the base on balls. I have a story to tell you folks about one of our Dear members of the crew, Danny Corso, who was our uh, on-field cameraman. Well, earlier today, Tammy Mandich, Gemma Ross, and our cameraman, Chewy, presented Danny with this Pony League jersey. 
On the left sleeve, Dan the cameraman, <laughs> number 55. I'm assuming that's your age, Danny, is that right? Is that it, 55? And I know Danny was really touched by the, the gesture, really pleased that uh, the folks here thought so much of him, uh, Tammy and Gemma and Chewy. You see the tip of the cap by Danny towards Chewy, who's our first base camera guy. And he also got a, a really nice coffee mug and that hat that he just tipped as well. It's his alumni on it, so <laughs> it was a special moment. It was really cool. I was actually sitting in there going over some notes when, when they presented him, and it was uh, one of those awesome moments. And a pitch behind the hitter, and the runners move up. A wild of one of the wildest of wild pitches. Yeah, that was uh, that one just slipped out of his hand from the get go. He really never had any part of that. But now the intentional yeah. walk, and then you knew that was coming. The intentional walk. So I'm not going to uh, accuse anybody of anything or say anything, but. Uh, I'm sure the plan was to throw the ball to the backstop in some capacity there just to go ahead and open up first base and put Gambo on base. You don't want to pitch to this guy with two guys on. Well, we had Jim Butch mic'd. He didn't say that, did he? Oh, there's another one. And sprinting for the plate, Ibarra scores. Other runners move up. It's 2 nothing. No, he definitely didn't say that, but you... You knew that he probably said, Dino, we're not going to give in to this guy, give him something over the middle of the plate because uh, we we can go ahead and walk him. And now we'll see what happens in this inning. Brownsville with a giant opportunity here to put some, put some distance on the scoreboard here and take a big lead, make this a big inning. So a 2 nothing ball game with runners at second and third. Puente in the number four spot of the batting order. Strike called one and one. A nice pitch there from LePan after missing the, the zone very badly behind the back of two right-handed hitters. He was able to find the strikes over there with a good fastball. Pitch outside. Two one pitch inside. You see the pan keep he's struggling right now. Looks like the ball's coming out of the side of his hand. That's now three out of uh, three out of his five pitches have been well into that right hand of batter's box. Three one pitch rocketed skyward right center and Sella makes the catch but Brownsville picks up a run on a hit. Two left on base. At the end of four and a half, Brownsville two, Bay County nothing. Brett loves tennis, but a knee injury made it hard to even walk. Then he got a new knee from Dr. Brian Mosier and AHN Orthopedics. The same experts Josh Bell turned to for his knee surgery. Now they're both back on their feet and rallying. Whatever your sport, whatever your level, getting back to what you love is living proof. Call 412 Doctors for an appointment with AHN, official medical provider of the Pittsburgh Pirates.
You're watching game three of the Pony League World Series. Last night, it was Puerto Rico that took care of Hagerstown, Maryland, 11 to 9. And how about Youngstown pitching the shutout against Mexico, 6 to nothing, the final in that one. And right now, it is Brownsville leading this one by the score of 2 to nothing over Bay County. Bay County certainly wants to get back in this one. Guys, back to you. Yeah, that shutout, uh, Anthony Miller pitched into the sixth inning, allowed only two hits and struck out 10. And the uh, offense for Youngstown, uh, Jared Malagies hit a two run homer in the sixth inning of that game. Changes. Lopez stays in the game to play left, and Solis moves from left to right. And for Bay County, it's Colton Hop. Starter Kevin Ibera still in the game here for Brownsville, Texas. Done a very nice job to this point, just allowing the two hits, no runs. Here we go again, landing a 1-0 count, which should be a fastball count. Ibera able to spin a breaking ball in there to get a strike. <laughs> Is there any such thing as a fastball count anymore? One one pitch to hop. Ball pitched it back out of play one and two. Third base coach Jim Butts tried the front door breaking ball there. It started the curveball right at the right shoulder or left shoulder of Colton Hop. And nice job by Hop to move the bat and foul that pitch off and spoil it. But instead of getting out of the way like you, uh, like I thought he was going to right off the bat, I didn't realize it was going to be a breaking ball. And he was able to stay in there and foul that pitch off, give himself another opportunity. Right there has just been excellent at pounding the strike zone here today. Just the one walk. And aside from that walk, he hasn't even been to a three ball count on any other Bay County hitter here today. Now two and two. Scoreless till the fourth. One run for Brownsville in the fourth, one on the fifth. Count stays at two and two. The only two hits for Bay County, the single by your guidance in the third, single by Giffel in the second. And hanging tough is Colton Hop from Auburn, Michigan. Hops put together a couple of good at-bats off Ibera here today. He saw seven pitches in his first plate appearance before grounding out to, to second base. Full count. Now he'll be seeing pitch number nine in this at-bat. He runs the count full, so Hop has put together a couple of good at-bats here today. And a foul ball. Now make this a double-digit pitch plate appearance for Colton Hop. And the walk leading off the bottom of the fifth inning. Not only is that a lead off walk for Bay County, but 10 pitches put on the pitch count of the starter Kevin Ibera. Huge at bat there for Colton Hop and for Bay County as they try to claw their way back into this baseball game. 27 for 12. 27 for 12. Pitch runner at first base. Ethan Burroughs. Ethan's brother, uh, 
Evan played in this Pony League World Series two years ago. Devin Schuler with a long look to the third base coach. It's the bottom of the fifth and what's scheduled to be a seven inning game and Bay County's down two. Ibarra 61 pitches. Oh, one pitch. Something off speed, nothing in two. Yeah, good breaking ball there. You just think about the at bat with Hop. Ten pitches it took, and he finally draws the walk. Iberis had two innings in this game where he threw less than ten pitches hmm. in the entire inning. A nine pitch first inning. And also a nine pitch fourth inning for Ibear. Well, that's a great note right there. One out. Just a good sequence of pitches there from Ibear. Fastball strike one, the breaking ball for a strike to get strike two, and then uh, you put that thought into Schuler's mind. He's looking off speed and he's able to blow that fastball by Devin Schuler for the strikeout in the first out of this inning. Huge. Huge strikeout for Brownsville. And your Guidus takes a strike. He singled in the third. 2 0 Brownsville leads. First game of three at the Pony League World Series. Fly ball the opposite way. Solis makes the catch. That's out number two. Burroughs back to first. And to the top of the batting order for Landon Sella. Gaitis almost got that one out of here. Took him all the way back to the warning track. Nice piece of hitting trying to go the other way. But Solis got turned the wrong way right off the bat. Was able to adjust and get back around and open that glove side shoulder and make the play for that big second out there in right field. Sell is 0 for 2. He has grounded out twice. And Landon bounces one past his dad. Expecting a giant crowd for the next game. How about you? I think so. A lot of folks coming from London. <laughs> There'll be a few, but I think uh, I always like the Washington games, the host team, because the crowds are big, a lot of enthusiasm. It's just a fun atmosphere to be a part of. One strike pitch to Sella from Ibarra. Fastball up. One of the stories of the game, though it seems to be you know, a story that may or may have minimal impact is the fact that Brownsville has stranded five, all five in scoring position. Wild pitch. Burrows to second. Just 0-2 fastball there from I bear that gets away from him. He was trying to get it up in the zone, trying to get Sella to chase a pitch above his hands, but it just sailed on him and was able to sneak by the catcher and get Burroughs into scoring position for Bay County. Two and two. He tried to go back up there again with the one two or the one two pitch, trying to get Sella to chase that fastball up, which he did in the 0 1 count. So, see if the approach changes here 2 2. I think you might see a breaking ball now. And he's went up twice. We'll see if he goes down with the spin. He did. But the wild pitch moves the runner to third. What was an 0 2 count? On Landon Sella has now been 
move to a 3-2 count. Three consecutive pitches way out of the zone from Abera, and we haven't seen that from him all day long. And the meeting. Hope you'll have a chance to be with us sometime for the Pony League World Series. Three games tomorrow, four on Monday, four on Tuesday. Roger Lenhart, our producer. Scott Bartlett, our director. All of the crew under the direction of Mike Parsons and Dan Lohman. With a runner at third, Burroughs, and two outs. The scoring in this game. Gamboa solo home run on the fourth for Brownsville. And then Ibarra singled, stole second, was wild pitch to third, and scored on a wild pitch. Ball four. And that pitch was close, a good fastball in the outer half of the plate. I agree, the pitch was off the plate, but that one could have went either way for sure. Great job by the catcher framing that pitch. Juan Garcia, the fourth back there, doing a nice job trying to steal a strike for his pitcher. And Robinson, 0 for 1, plus a walk. 2 0 Brownsville leads. Pitch up high. Now this game's starting to get a little bit interesting. Ibera losing his command a little bit, maybe getting tired. Up over the 70 pitch mark now at 72. And tying run is on first base, and the go ahead run. In the form of Aiden Robinson is at home plate. 2 0. Time called, and Daniel Castillo will go out to the mound. This is a good, good visit here by the by the skipper Castillo to go out and settle his guy down. Iber has just been outstanding here today, but has ran into a little bit of command issues and some trouble here with two outs in the bottom of the fifth inning. Go out there, get him to control his heartbeat a little bit, just take a deep breath, and get back, uh, get back into that rhythm that he had been in for four and two thirds. Two nothing ball game. Bottom of the fifth inning, it was Gamboa who led off the fourth thing with the opposite field home run. It's been scoreless game till then. And then after two outs in the fifth inning, Navarra singled and scored on a wild pitch. They said he stole second, wild pitch to third. And runners at first and third, two outs here. And two and one on Robinson. A good pitch there. After the meeting with his, his manager, fires a strike to get himself back into this count. Was down two balls and no strike, right, right back into it in a 2-1 count. Runner at first is going, called strike. And pretty much Brownsville ignores Sella. Sella, as a matter of fact, stopped about Two thirds of the way to second base. So the tying run is in scoring position. 2 2 pitch is high. Another 3 2 count. The third 3 2 count of the inning. And there had been only one you said through the first four, yes, right? One through the first four innings. He had went to a three ball count one time. And both of those three two counts ended up in walks here in this inning. Foul ball near the third base side and back out of play. So we'll get another three two pitch in this inning. Hop walked, wild pitch to second. Burroughs was. Burroughs as a pinch runner. Burroughs wild pitch to third. Sala walked, stole second. So Burroughs on the front door. And Aiden Robinson, left-handed batter, had a chance to tie the game in the bottom of the fifth inning. Base hit into right field, Burroughs scores. Sella will be held at third. The throw goes to first, and Robinson beats it. It's a 2-1 ball game. 
How about that? A close play at first base that would have ended the inning for Brownsville, but a nice job by Robinson who really hustled up the line to make sure he got there. We're going to see it here. Very close play at first base. Ran the risk of throwing that ball away and letting the tying run score. I guess I prematurely said that Burrow scores. He would not have had the out been recorded at first base. What a turn of events here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And Bay County's where it wants to be in the lineup. Number three hitter Schultz. Well, this right handed batter's 0 for 2 is grounded out and flied out. See if any point here do they put Robinson in motion over there in first base and try to get that go ahead run moved up into scoring position. There he goes. Called strike. Nice call, Ernie Galuski. Once again, Brownsville with no play at second base. They have their first and third defense on, I guess, where they're just not going to mess with that throw, risk the chance of uh, scoring that run from third base on an errant throw or a mishandling of the ball. Full windup now. And Schultz strikes out. Bay County, Michigan picks up a run on one hit. Two left in scoring position through five. Brownsville, Texas, two. Bay County, Michigan, one. Make a Dunkin' run for a $2 pick-me-up and avoid the afternoon drag. Should have got one for John. Yeah. Sorry, John. It's OK. Come in for a $2 medium latte or cappuccino from 2 to 6 p.m. America runs on Dunkin'. A college education. A new den edition. The trip of a lifetime. At West Banco, your home becomes more than a home when you take advantage of our new low home equity flex line loan rate. West Banco, by all accounts, better. The perfect car is waiting for you at South Hills Toyota and we make it simple. South Hills Toyota has been delivering quality vehicles and quality service for decades. Our goal is to have your total ownership experience always exceed your expectations. We always keep a tremendous inventory so you can find the right vehicle for you and your family. The vehicle you want from the dealership you trust, South Hills Toyota, it really is all at the mall. Make a Dunkin' run for a $2 pick-me-up and avoid the afternoon drag. Should've got one for John. Yeah, sorry John. It's okay. Come in for a $2 medium latte or cappuccino from 2 to 6 p.m. America runs on Dunkin'. Take a look at some of these Major League Baseball greats at the Pony League World Series. That's Paul Wehner in the yellow coat, Don Zimmer, the legendary ageless one, and Tommy Lasorda with the black jacket and black shirt signing autographs. A lot of greats have made their ways here and through Washington County for the Pony League World Series. We got a good one here. It's a barn burner. Back to Lanny and Ernie. Well, thank you uh, for uh, Bay County hop re-enters at third base. He gave way to a pinch runner in the bottom of the fifth. And so Brownsville's number five hitter Garcia steps to the plate. Garcia doubled in the fourth. He's one for two. And LePan takes the mound again. Keegan LePan, who came in to get the last out of the inning, did throw two wild pitches in the previous innings. We'll see what the command looks like here when uh, he gets a fresh inning to start on his own. The pitching for Bay County, Giffel went two and two-thirds scoreless. Schmidt worked two and gave up the two runs, both earned. Two balls, one strike. Now two balls, two strikes. And home run distance for Juan Garcia, but just foul down the left field line.
Garcia leading off Castillo to follow then Solis. On the run. Schultz with a strike to Giffle one away in the top of the sixth. Brownsville leads two to one. Did a nice job there by LaPan to pound the ball in the strike zone. Nice play by the shortstop there. Schultz, he kind of waited on that ball to see what type of English, what kind of spin it was going to have on it. As he saw that he was going to get a true hop. Did a nice job of fielding through in it. On to first with an accurate throw to the first inning of the eight, first out of the inning here. Now Castillo 0 for 2. Pitch outside, championship game of the 2019 Dick Sporting Goods Pony League World Series, 7 o'clock Thursday night on AT&T Sports. 2 and 1. It's like Bay County is going to go start the bullpen again. It's been a very active and busy bullpen here today for, for Bay County. This foul ball off to the right side, well out of play. And the scramble for the free baseball. Nothing like getting a foul ball at, a, at the ballpark no, as, a, as a spectator. Also having something from the concession stand. Ball fouled away. One of the great traditions here at the Pony League World Series, so they, uh, they tell the fans that you can keep all the souvenir foul balls, but when a player hits a home run, Pony League would like to have that baseball and encourages folks to bring the ball to the press box so it can be presented to the player who hit the home run. Three and two on Castillo, and then the fan that does deliver that ball to the press box gets a brand new one. Yeah, pretty cool ritual here that they actually, they recognize the player during the game on the field in between innings. Ball strike three. Second out of the sixth inning. See how that ball runs back there, a fastball that started off the plate but had enough tail to make its way back to the edge. Nobody on two down, and Solis the batter. At least forced to duck out of that pitch, duck out of the way of that pitch. That's the third time we've seen Keegan LePan do that. It's almost like the ball is slipping out of his hand. He looks at his hand every time, but that's the third pitch now he's thrown behind a right-handed hitter. Ben Sporman warming up in the bullpen. Counts one ball and one strike. Two to one, Brownsville leading. And Jim Butts wants to make another trip to the mound. We have Jim miked for this game. Hey, I got to save some pitching, all right? And I'm bringing Ben in. Oh, Coach, you got to do the... We'll have a seat. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you got two outs, Benny. Give me, the, give me the righty, okay? All right. You got two. You got two two down. Straight. Two down. Come on. Need you right now. Focus. Confidence. Get your curveball across. We need it. All right. Come on, Ben. Here you go, Dallas. I need you here. Yeah, I've said that quite a few times myself out there on a mountain visit. <laughs> need you to step up here and pound the strike zone, make some pitches for us, get us out of this inning. Sporm in the fourth. Pitcher of the game for Bay County. Well, things got underway Thursday night. They fan fest at Dick's Sporting Goods in Washington, Pennsylvania. Not all the teams were were there because some had uh, not yet arrived in Pittsburgh, but a good number of the clubs were on hand for the festivities. And Joe Clinchock. 
Meyer at Parrott. That was Thursday night at Dick's Sporting Goods. So Sporman comes on now. By the way, uh, Ben Sporman's dad is a police officer. His dad, Eric, is a police officer and, and firefighter in Bay City, Michigan. So it's a 2 1 ball game in the top of the sixth inning. See if Sporman can be the next guy in line here for Bay County. Already four pitchers used, and you can tell that Bay County is coming, in, coming into this game with a plan of how they're going to handle their pitching, especially here in the first game. And it's very, very difficult on these managers to, to try to manage these types of baseball games where you have pitch counts and you have days rest that are going to be forced upon you. And you obviously want to win your first game of a double elimination tournament, or you really, you know, you, you really get behind early and it's difficult to come back through. So, you know, every decision, very, very important, especially early in these tournaments. And Bay County sticking with their plan here and not letting pitchers throw too many pitches. Now two and one, nobody on two down. Two one pitch. Fired back to the screen to make it three and one. A little bit erratic here for Sporman right out of the bullpen. Two pitches. Two pitches that are well outside the strike zone. Three and two. How about the adjustment? After sailing two pitches, makes a great adjustment there and is able to find the plate to. Run this count to full here with two outs. 2 1 Brownsville, sixth inning. And they hit Batchman. Tried to throw the breaking ball there in a 3 2 count. You can see here that he really tries to guide it there at the end and uh, didn't quite totally believe in it. Ball doesn't have the break that he was hoping for and it ends up hitting the shoulder of. Solis. And Rene Zayas, who is 1 for 2. Center fielder Sella playing very shallow. Runner going. Boucher to first. Giffle with the play. And apparently Zayas uh, bounced that ball off his. Off his leg, but if that be the case, it'd be a foul ball. But yeah, we'll see. Uh, see what just twisted his ankle. See what the replay looks like here. Yeah, he definitely looks like he might have just been trying to sell that one. <laughs> hey, good job trying to sell it. Or he cramped up. Maybe his left leg cramped up. A hit batsman and a man left on base. Through five and a half, Brownsville two, Bay County one. a problem whatever could it be your face is on my debit card ha! no problemo here's the one you want this is not over <laughs> Ooh, cat videos member FDIC and equal housing lender Lou Hayes Pony League Field is the first Pony League Field ever created. And this is from 1955. You see the crowds arriving, check out those vintage cars. Fans walking into the game. Big, big packed house. They sat wherever they could. Hillsides, whatever worked. There were some bleachers available as well. But just a fantastic tradition that started 68 years ago. And there was some uh, shaky times 2012 
the uh, county took it over, wanted to keep it alive, and then in 2015, Dick Sporting Goods stepped up in a big way, and it looks like the Pony League World Series is here in Washington County for a long, long time to come. It is a fantastic tradition. It is great baseball, and we got a great one going on right here. To finish it out, Lanny and Ernie. All right, uh, Paul, uh, Ishmael Villarreal takes over in center field for uh, Rene Zayas, who came up limping after grounding out to end the top of the sixth. All right, here for Bay County, this is the middle part of their batting order. Chase Giffel one for two in the ball game. And I bear with only 14 more pitches to work with in this game, so we'll see how this inning plays out. Strike called. You know the the Washington Bank commercials with George Washington, and now the addition of Abraham Lincoln to the commercial. Wouldn't it be neat if they did a whole series commercial had like Millard Fillmore sometime or Benjamin Harrison or William Henry Harrison? Yeah, that would be pretty interesting. James K. Polk. You're spitting some ideas here that might come to life. Line drive, base hit. Giffel's second into the game, leadoff single, one run ball game. And Nathan Ball, now he's the number five hitter of the order. Second hit of the game there for Giffel, and the second time that he's hit a line drive over the shortstop's head into left field to lead off an inning. Did that in the second inning, the leadoff single, and now in the bottom of the sixth inning to get Bay County started here, down one run in the bottom of the sixth. And we are going to have a pitching change here. Coach Castillo has gone to the mound to make the change. From center field to the pitcher's mound for Ishmael Villarreal. We can see the other changes at a pivotal point of this game, bottom of the sixth inning. Two one Brownsville leads. Wajardo went to the dugout to get a different glove. For Ibarro, five plus innings. He can be the winner, cannot be the loser. Just in the warm up pitches here, you can tell. We're going to see a little bit of velocity here from Villarreal. Good live arm, right handed pitcher. Second game, Washington, Pennsylvania against London of the United Kingdom. Okay, uh, Wajardo's going out to left field. Lopez in right. Um, Abara is at short. And I believe that uh, Puente Moved to second. Two one ball game. Ishmael Villarreal coming on. Interesting note about Ishmael's dad, broadcaster in the Mexican League for so many years. They play a high quality of baseball in the Mexican League. A lot of former major leaguers or guys that have a bunch of affiliated ball. Experience. Nathan Ball takes ball one. Nathan Ball's dad, an assistant baseball coach at Saginaw Valley State. Pitch away. You know, the big thing here for Villarreal is just to be able to come in the game and throw strikes, command the strike zone early here. One ball, one strike, no outs runner at first. 
Bouncer to the mound. Play to second base and thrown out into center field. Giffel goes to third. Fielder's choice, E1, nobody out. And all of a sudden, Bay County has things looking favorably for it with the tying run at third and the winning run on base, or the potential go-ahead run on base. When Mia Real just makes a little bit of an error and throw, and you think about all the defensive changes that Brownsville just made. They just moved the shortstop Puente over to second base, and it looked like there was some communication issues there on who was going to cover second base, what middle infielder, and Puente a little bit late to the bag there. And Villarreal tried to lead him and ended up throwing it behind him into that right center field gap. And Bay County now with just an unbelievable opportunity here, not only to tie the game, but to take the lead here in the bottom of the sixth. Sporman the batter, and Jim Butts is going to make some type of change here. Get a helmet. That's going to be a pinch hitter here, a pinch runner. Going in and run. Pinch runner. Max Fellows will pinch run at first base. First and third, no outs. Brownsville led 2 nothing. After scoring a run in the fourth and one of the fifth, and then Bay County picked up a run in the bottom of the fifth inning. Nobody out. Middle infielders double play depth. Brownsville saying here that it will be happy to take, give up a run to get the double play. And Puente really playing uh, into that four hole gap. At second base, we just saw him move from short to second, a long ways from second base right now. Oh, good fastball, 0 and 2. And Ishmael Villarreal, 0 2 pitch. Sporman swings and misses. Runner goes to second. And for the third time in two innings, we see the uh, Brownsville team ignore the base runner. Yeah, and they don't want to make a mistake with the tying run at third base. Um, not taking any chances, but that does move the go-ahead run now into scoring position for Bay County, which, you know, also takes the force out off the infield, takes the double play out of order, and now Brownsville's going to have to bring their infield in to try to cut down the tying run. A little bit of a risky decision here with just the tying run being a third base. And, and Colton Hopp takes ball one. Giffle the runner at third. Fellows at second. Foul ball to make it one and one. You can tell Brownsville has a ton of confidence in Villarreal here. Very live fastball, bringing the infield in, even though they are winning the game by a run right now. Just the tying run at second, and, you know, that opens up the infield where a lot of balls get through the infield now with the infield in with the go-ahead run at second base, but shows you the confidence they have in their big right-hander here. Runner breaking for the plate. Pitch is missed. Run scores. It's a strike. Tied game at two, and Fellows moves to third. How about that, man? I think it was a suicide squeeze with the hitter. Not offering at the pitch, but just mishandled by the catcher, Garcia, behind the plate. The ball kicks away, and Bay County able to tie the game here on a steal of home plate. And it's, called, it's a one-ball, two-strike count. It's one and two. That's the count. With a runner at third and one out, infield in, a 2-2 game. Ball gets by the catcher. Fellows is in there. And it is now a 3-2 Bay County lead. Just an unbelievable change of events here for Brownsville, Texas. Bay County with just the one hit in this inning. Able to extend the inning with an error 
And then a couple of wild pitches, pass balls to not only tie the game here, but take the lead. Two runs charged to the starter, Ibarra. The third run charged to Ishmael Villarreal. And you think back here, the second hitter of the inning, Nathan Ball hits a comebacker right at Villarreal. It should have been a one to four, or one to six to three double play to end this sixth inning, but Brownsville not able to handle the ball. The throw goes into right center field, puts guys on first and third, and just a few pitches later, after a three-pitch strikeout for Brownsville, a few pitches later, and Bay County now owns the lead, three, three to two here, after two consecutive wild pitches to allow runs to score. Count two balls, two strikes. Three and two on Hop. Right over the head of Hop and right over his head with a lot of life on that fastball, no doubt about it. Live arm here. Ismail. Villarreal. 3-2, Bay County leads. We were scoreless through three. It was a 2-0 game from the top of the fifth until Bay County scored one run in the fifth and two in the sixth inning. Count remains at 3-2. and two. Colton Hop's taken a couple swings in this at bat where he's been right on the fastball of Villarreal. Kind of power versus power here right now with the full count and one out. Ball four. You know, Lanny, and what was a game that was very cleanly played for really the first four innings. No walks. We didn't have an error in the game. Pitchers were in control. The game has gotten a little bit on the sloppy side here in the fifth and the sixth innings. Lucas Julian, the pinch hitter for Schuler. Runner at first, two outs. Ball foul back. I would really be interested to see if Hop runs here, whether they ignore him as they have, if Brownsville would ignore the base runner as it has consistently these last two innings. But Hop is, did not get off to a very big lead on the first pitch of the uh, at bat. You know, that's one of the biggest differences, at least in my opinion, between a a youth baseball game landing, say the Pony League World Series, and a you know a high caliber college game or professional baseball is how the first and third defenses ran. You know, in the major leagues, they'll just throw you out. <laughs> first and third, you try to steal second, they throw you out. You know, the guy from third usually doesn't advance. But at these, you know, at these younger levels of baseball, you know, every team has first and third defenses, and one of them is just for the catcher to hold the ball. Go ahead and let them. You concede the bag. Let him steal second because you don't want to take any chances in that guy from third base um, being able to come down the line and score. Ball looped out into shallow center field. Base hit for Julian on an 0-2 pitch. Hop to second. 3-2 Bay County leads. And Miles Rajagaitis is coming up. Just the second hit of the inning here for Bay County, but they've already pushed two runs across and continue to put pressure on this Brownsville team now with first and second and only one out in the inning. And, you know, one spot in the batter wording away from turning this lineup ever and getting back to the leadoff hitter, Sella. Ball one. Your guide is one for two. With two good at bats today for your guide us. A single over the second baseman's head and then the fly out deep to right field to the warning track. Yeah. 
And foul ball to uh, run the count to one and one. And Hop probably not a major threat to steal there at second base, but Brownsville not paying much attention to him at second base, allowing him to get a really big lead. Two and one now. Hop the runner at second, Julian at first, the 2 1 pitch. Foul ball out of play. If you're a Bay County hitter right now, Via Real is throwing really nothing but the fastball. Now it's a fastball with a lot of life, and it's been all over the place at times, but uh, you probably need to sit on that one pitch here. Sit on a really good fastball. Try not to get beat, even though Villarreal has an overpowering fastball that can he can definitely throw by you. Two on. Swing and a miss. Now two outs. And as soon as I say that, he throws, I think, his first breaking ball of the inning <laughs> to get the strikeout. And now Landon Sella, left hand hitting outfitter 0 for 2. With Hop the runner at second, Julian at first. Bay County has taken the lead here in the bottom of the sixth inning. So that means it's a do or be done seventh inning for Brownsville. And hitters 9 1 and 2 are coming up. Puente and Iberis paying some more attention to that runner at second base. Now the second baseman Puente, who had played third or short for most of the game, really spending some time around the bag trying to keep Hop close to second base here with two outs. And the count one and one. This inning. Featured uh, the two runs on two hits. Pitch is high. And the count of two and one. Fly ball out of play. The tying run of this game, the first run of this inning. Jace Giffel on a suicide squeeze scoring. Which ended up actually being scored as a stolen base because the, the hitter does not get the bunt down, tries to actually pull back, but it's just the jump that Giffel was able to get at third base. He was able to steal the bag. So a stolen base of home plate to tie this game. You don't mm -hmm. see that every day. And then the wild pitch got Fellows home to put Bay County in front. Way outside, we've seen a good number of three ball counts over the last two innings. Yeah, this has uh, been a lot of pitches thrown here in the last couple of innings. And Villarreal very close to balking there. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, I didn't know. I'm not sure if he if he did come to a stop. <laughs> Looks like he kind of blew through the set position. We'll see what he does here. Runners going on this 3-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. And in the Sixth inning, Bay County takes the lead, scoring two runs on two hits. There was a pitcher's throwing error. Two left on base. Seventh inning, Bay County leads 3 2. There's a place far from the city, yet just down the road, where likes and shares mean more. It's in every bite, each performance, and every night where the miles we ride together become the memories we share forever. We dream because they fought for it. We give because they worked for it. The American spirit lives here. I can feel it. 
At Pathways of Southwestern Pennsylvania, we believe that every life has potential and we're dedicated to fulfilling it. Our programs give every child the opportunity to overcome obstacles, achieve milestones, and reach their fullest early learning potential. From cutting edge development therapies and daily medical supervision to quality early education for children of all abilities, we cater to each family's specific needs. Pathways of Southwestern Pennsylvania, your path to lifelong fulfillment. Last call for Brownsville in the uh, sixth inning. Bay County took advantage of throwing error, really set the stage. Gipple scored, stole a uh, stolen base of home plate, then a wild pitch. And Fellows came home. Ball one on uh, Alex Warhoda. Mojardo is 0 for 1. Bay County able to take the lead here, score both of those runs on only the two singles, but a walk and an error mixed in the middle there and some aggressive base running. The winner of this game plays at 8 o'clock on Monday against either Shimmy Valley or the winner of the London-Washington game, which is coming up next. Three balls, no strikes. Sporman in line to get the win. He came into the game in the top of the sixth, hit a batter, then got a ground out to end the inning. Ball four. Certainly not what Bay County wanted. The leadoff walk. And uh, Brownsville top of the batting order, Kevin Ibarra. Ibarra, who pitched so effectively. Scoreless pitching through four and then ran into a little bit of trouble in the fifth inning and was charged with two runs in the game. Came out of the game in the sixth as the pitcher started to show bunt. Throw to first base from catcher Ball. Tell you what, Sporman there, nice job of almost quick pitching the bar there. I'm not sure that he was totally ready. I think the bunt was on, but Sporman real quick got through his motion and was able to deliver strike one. Bunts and the out, sacrifice one three. Well, the old adage has been in baseball for a long time that you play for a win when you're on the road and you play for a tie when you're at home, but Brownsville turns away from that and moves the tying run into second base with one out. I'll say I was a little surprised he did bunt there. You know, he had a couple of good at bats, flew out to right field couple of times deep and a single up the middle, but Brownsville elects to go ahead and put that tying run into scoring position here and give up the out. Lopez, as a pinch hitter in the fifth, walked. Swing and a miss. I mentioned this back in the uh, sixth inning. Landon Sella, the center fielder, playing extremely shallow. Left fielder Schuler is in all of that. Isn't all that deep as well. Tying run at second base. Popped up. Is it playable? It is, but Giffle gave it a shot. Couldn't come up with it. And the count is 0-2 on Lopez. What a good effort there by Giffle. Very tough play, especially for a left-handed throwing first baseman to make that play over his shoulder. Great effort, but ends up just being a strike. But Sporman ahead in the count here. No balls and two strikes. Two. 
Strike three on the breaking ball, two outs. We talk about stepping up and making a pitch in a big situation. That's exactly what Sporman did. Sporman did right there. He got ahead 0-2, then throws probably his best breaking ball, one of the best breaking balls of the day in a huge situation to get the second out and the strikeout looking. Well, Brownsville's got the guy up there that it wants in this situation. Gamboa doubled in the first, had a home run in the fourth. His home run of the fourth, hitting the first run of the game. Gamboa takes the curveball, ball one. I must say, I'm really surprised they're pitching to Gamboa right now with first base open. I know he represents the go ahead run. I have a feeling Gamboa is going to be a guy that's going to uh, impress a lot of people here this week in Washington. Just a big, strong physical presence in that batter's box already with a double and a homer today. 2 and 0, oh, good block by Ball. And the intentional walk is yeah. ordered. Boy, Ernie, you're on top of your game today. Yeah, and that's, you have to play. I, I don't disagree with that one bit. I know there'd be a lot of people that say you just put the, the go-ahead run, potentially the winning run, on base. But I think it's a special situation when you have to, uh, when you have to pitch to a guy like Gambo. Why not put those two guys on base? You have two outs, and now you have, only have a four outs on the left, infield. So I'm changing right now. Okay. Hey, you're you were going to third. You're going to first. Jason, I need you in left. Te send Devin to center. Jitters are coming back. Well, so pump them in the zone. Hey, we got two out guys on second and first. All right, number four batter up. They're going to be throwing a lot of junk at them. Find it. Find it. Yep. Throw a lot of junk at him. Fifth pitcher of the game for Bay County. With runners at first and second and two outs. Yeah, and I think we have some defensive moves here. I think Giffel, the first baseman, is going to go to left field. Sporman, the pitcher, is going to go to first. So Hop to first. I'm trying to figure this all out, Lanny. <laughs> Hop goes to first. Sporman to third. Schuler will now go to center field with the center fielder Selleck coming to the mound. And first baseman Giffel to left field. You got all that? I got it all. <laughs> the United Kingdom against Washington County, our next game. And here with two men on, Easy Puente, the number four batter coming up. Remember, Jim Butts told Landon Sella, throw him a lot of junk. You've seen Sella here primarily all he's thrown is the breaking ball here in his warm-up pitches coming from center field. Big situation here, the tying run at second base, the go-ahead run at first base. Two outs here in the top of the seventh inning, one out away for a win for Bay County, Michigan in their first game of the 2019 Pony League World Series. We weren't the only ones confused, Lanny. I think everybody, a lot of position changes. The last two pitching changes we've seen in this game, it almost like was musical positions out there. Everybody was going someplace new. By the way, speaking of left field, Giffel is quite deep with a tying run at second base. 3-2 Bay County leads. Pitches outside ball one to Puente. Of course, keep in mind with that conversation and the talking uh, from Jim Butts about throwing a lot of junk, that could lead to a wild pitch that moves the potential go ahead run into scoring position. Three, two, Bay 
wasn't junk. And right there, whether it's fastball or junk or spin, still, I think you've heard me say this before, I think you've actually laughed at it, that, I mean, the best pitch in the history of baseball isn't a curveball or a fastball, it's a strike. <laughs> You know, that's first and foremost, you need to throw your best pitch, which is a strike. Bay County and out away from winning. Runner goes from second and it's fouled off. One and two on Puente, and it'll send Mojardo back to second base. Gutsy move there by Brownsville and Mojardo. Imagine making the last out of this game at third base. <laughs> what would that do to the baseball gods? <laughs> But Wajardo's done a nice job out there at second base, expanding his leads. He's going to be able to score on a base hit or a ball that leaves the infield just based on the effort he's given in his leads. Pitches up high, check swing. An appeal to the first base umpire, and the ruling of the home plate umpire is sustained by the man in blue down the right field line. And I think that's a very good call. Nowhere close to offering at that pitch, and you never want to end the game on that call anyway. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, and two on. 3-2, Bay County leads, Bay County wins. He went upstairs with the fastball. He was told to throw him a lot of junk, and he ended up getting the strikeout to end the game with the fastball. Nice job by Bay County to come from behind and win this game. Bay County defeats Brownsville 3-2. DJ's a sharpshooter, but when he went down with a shoulder tear, he lost his aim. That's when Dr. Sam Akavon and the sports medicine team at AHN got it back for him, just like they did for Josh Bell. Thanks to the surgeons at AHN, they're both back in the game and back on target. Whatever your sport, whatever your level, getting back to what you love is living proof. Call 412-DOCTORS for an appointment with AHN, official medical provider of the Pittsburgh Pirates. At Community Bank, we've made it our business to help area businesses thrive. No matter where you go to work, talk to our business banking team to see how Community Bank can work for you. It's what better business banking is all about. That's Community Bank. for a new home or to refinance an existing one? The Mortgage Team at Community Bank will show you how to make your dream home a dream come true. Plus, our rates are pretty dreamy too. All because building better communities is our business. That's Community Bank. Three games today in the first one. Bay County comes from behind to win by a score of three to two, picking up the tying and winning or what turned out to be the winning run in the bottom of the sixth inning. Let's go to Paul Alexander. Thank you very much, Lenny. We're with manager Jim Butts. And Jim, you got to tell me, that was a suicide squeeze that the batter just did not put the squeeze part on. But it still worked. And then, and then uh, uh, you took advantage of the fact that we weren't finding the strike zone, and you guys were very aggressive on the bias, on the bass phase. So what, what, what goes on from here? I mean, you, you feel like you steal one here. How do you feel going forward? We take a rest tomorrow, and we start worrying about Sunday here. And... Uh, Put it back together and practice and get ready to go. So obviously, coming from behind, no quitting your team. We've done that a lot as we've been getting ready this year. We did it in the zone a few times. We did it in our warm-up tournaments and something that we preach a lot to be tough. And to just keep and never give up. Fantastic. That's the way they get it done. They win it by the score of three to two. Guys, back to you. All right, Washington and London coming up next. The the fact that uh, Brown that uh, Bay County has won it advances to play on Monday at eight o'clock. Jace Giffel is our player of the game. Giffel was two for three in the ball game. He scored the uh, the tying run stole home on what was supposed to be a suicide squeeze. Giffel pitched two and two scoreless innings as the starter in the ball game for Bay County. 
As I said a moment ago, our next game on AT&T Sports, London against Washington. Final score, Bay County 3, Brownsville, Texas 2. Kick off the fall season at the EQT Washington and Greene County's Covered Bridge Festival, September 21st and 22nd. Explore 10 different scenic Covered Bridge locations and an array of activities from craft and food vendors, historical reenactments, entertainment, and more. Break away from the everyday. Take a deep breath and dream here. Unplug, unwind, and just be here. Plan your trip today at visitwashingtoncountypa.com. The American spirit lives here.